Hi, welcome to the next episode of Oceanarium Fish Bites, brought to you by Explore the Ocean World Oceanarium at Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. I'm Ellen Gaithel, and today we're going to talk about some deeper water echinoderms. Now, we said before that echinoderm is a scientific name, and it means spiny-skinned or hedgehog-like animal. So all echinoderms have spiny skin, radial symmetry, that means they're round. They all have their mouth on the underside of their body. They all have tube feet that help them move with suction discs on the end. And none of them have any blood. They use seawater instead of blood. It's called a water vascular system. So we have talked about the intertidal animals, the animals we find on the beach or in the tide pools that are very familiar to us. These animals live in deeper water and you won't find them in the intertidal zone. They have to stay very cold and uh, constant salinity. So how do I get them? Obviously I can't swim down and pick them up off the bottom. I can't scuba dive that deep down to 300 to 1000 feet. So I ask the commercial fishermen when they're fishing to bring things in for me, which they do gladly. My husband's a commercial fisherman. He has a small day boat dragger in Hampton Beach and he and his crew bring all sorts of things to me so that I can use them in my programs. So the first, he's also a scientist, the same as I am. He studies vertebrates. I study invertebrates. So this first invertebrate that I have to show you, it's an echinoderm called a red mud star. They live about 300 feet below the surface. This is what they look like. They can get to be about a foot across and it, you can see that he's, his spines on the top are a little bit duller than the ones on the other stars. When you turn them over, their mouth is here. They have no plates in their mouth like a sea urchin. They do have hundreds of little wiggly things down here called tube feet with the suction cups. The red mud stars, since they live in the mud, have bigger suction discs so that they can move around more easily in the mud. Now, every sea star has a little dot on the outside of their body, on the dorsal side. This is a common northern sea star. You can see this right here. That's called a sieve plate. And sieve plates are a filter. That's where they pull water into their body, filter the dirt and sediment out so that they can use it to circulate through their vascular system. And um, we never put our fingers on there because if we block that or damage it, they won't be able to filter what's coming into their body or breathe. So we're going to be very gentle with that. Now, the next sea star that I'm going to show you from deep water is a little bit different. It's called a purple sun star. Here we go. Now, sun stars are solasters. The other stars are asters. And this one, solasters have more than one. You can see the water squirting out up here. More than five arms or rays. So this one has nine rays and you can see that there's a couple rays longer than the others. Why is that? That's because he at some point was damaged and lost part of that arm or all of that ray and it's going to grow back to the same length as this one or and this one but they all it looks like he's been a little bit damaged and is regenerating. We talked about that before. All sea stars can regenerate. Now when you turn him over, he's been eating. You can see his mouth right here. That's part of his stomach. Now if he were eating, his stomach would be as big as his body. But he's just finished a meal and he's just digesting. These animals are really strange. They are cannibals. They're carnivorous. They eat other echinoderms, mainly other sun stars. So what they do is they crawl along with their tube feet until they find another star. They land on top of it, shoot out their stomach, and start to digest it. This can take up to a week. The star on the underside doesn't even know he's being eaten until it's too late. Very strange, almost like science fiction. Now, this last sea star that I'm going to show you lives in very deep water, down to a thousand feet. It's called a pizza star and it's a really unique animal. It looks just like, I think, a cheese pizza. Very slimy on the top like melted cheese. We're not going to touch that. It has gills up there that are very sensitive and so we're not going to touch it or damage it but you can see that it does have a sieve plate 
right there. And we'll turn him over. There's his mouth right there, and you can see where the tube feet and the oral groove is down the middle where all those tube feet are. Now this animal is really weird. Sea stars have three ways of reproducing. First, they regenerate. So any sea star has a central disc. If they lose a ray, they will regenerate a new one. But that old ray, if it has one cell from that central disc, will grow into an entirely new sea star. That's regeneration. They can also do something really weird called budding. And that is when they grow as another little tiny baby sea star on their ray or by any place on their body and it just falls off. Pretty strange. But this one can do something else. It has all sea stars lay eggs and, they, and they're fertilized. But usually they do it, it's called broadcast fertilization. In the water they all lay their eggs all at once. But this one has a little brood pouch. I'm going to put him in the water for a second to let him cool off. It has a brood pouch right on the top of its body and the eggs stay in there, they're fertilized, and then they develop in that brood pouch. And then when they're ready to hatch, it's like a volcanic explosion and all these thousands of tiny little tiny sea stars come flying right out of the middle of his body. That's weird. So those are the deep water stars that are most common here. We also have um, crossasters, there are spiny sun stars, and uh, we have blood stars. Sometimes you can find these in the tide pools, but they're very tiny. You'll find them, they're either bright red or purple. This one's purple. They look kind of like rolled Play-Doh. You can see that the tube feet on the underside look a little different. And we have mud stars um, that are look like uh, badges on a, um, a sheriff. They live not as deep as the others, but they're very common in the mud. So that's it for the sea stars, the deep water stars. And if you have any questions about them or any of the other videos, email me at explorettheoceanworld at hotmail.com or you can watch our YouTube videos on YouTube at Explore the Ocean World LLC Oceanarium or on our Facebook page, Explore the Ocean World LLC. Until next time, Keep thinking about the ocean. Bye.